Hi everyone, welcome back. Today's video is a little bit different. I was hesitant to do a video on Black Lives Matter. I couldn't find the words to say how I felt or even if my voice would add anything important. Then I came across a video by John Oliver, the host of the HBO program Last Week Tonight, which you will see in a minute. And his passion and outrage really got me thinking. You see, I grew up in an all-white community in a little village in Ireland where we were taught to treat everyone the same, but that was easy because everyone around me was the same as me. Uh, I think the first, pers the first black person uh, I saw that wasn't on the TV was, I think, when the Harlem Globetrotters came to Ireland in 1989. Yeah, I thought maybe black people or people of colour looked different, but I never thought any less of them or thought myself superior. Never, never, never. And I never really understood that train of thought. And I think most Irish people think the same way. So the recent protests around the world have highlighted the need uh, that something has to be done to finally make a change and put an end to some kind of uh, to some kind of to all kinds of racism so I thought what can I do to add to this what, what can I do to help uh, well number one I can educate my little boy who is two years old and give him the same education I received that everyone no matter their race religion or beliefs deserves equal rights and number two I decided to take John Oliver's brilliant speech or parts thereof, as it's 30 minutes long, and give my students some vocabulary so that they can have their voice heard in English, if that's what you want to do. Now, John uses many uh, cool collocations and expressions, and I'll explain all of these in the video to hopefully give you a really broad vocabulary on this topic. He also uses some very colorful language also, <laughs> known as bad language, just to give you a little warning that that's in there. So hopefully it will widen your vocabulary. And if you liked the video and you think others like it too, just click subscribe and please share. Now, over to you, John. We're going to do something a little bit different tonight. Our whole show is actually going to be about one thing. And you probably know what and you probably know why. Because all week long, protesters have continued to fill the streets in all 50 states in the wake of the horrific murder of George Floyd by the police. All week long, uh, the long really here is just for emphasis. Uh, we can use all day long, all night long. It's really just saying that something lasted the whole week. And in this case, it's the protests. Protesters are people who publicly demonstrate an opposition to something. And they're also called demonstrators as well. And they often stage a protest, which is a statement or action displaying disapproval or objection to something. In the wake of here is in the wake of the murder of George Floyd it means following or as a result of. And in response to those protests, which have been a stirring pushback against institutional racism and brutality. Stirring pushback. Stirring means something emotional, and a pushback is a negative reaction. So it's an emotional negative reaction. Institutional racism and brutality. This institutional here means it's not uh, looking at one-on-one -on -one interactions of racism or brutality. It means it's societal. It means it's in the system, uh, in the government, in all of our systems, so it also is called systemic racism or brutality. It's been frankly sickening to see them met with this. Across the country, peaceful protests have too often devolved into standoffs. A standoff is a situation where no one side is winning. And if peaceful protests devolve into standoffs, means it's they go down a level so they w another word we use for that is to escalate basically it gets worse and there is a negative outcome to it with heavily armed police using military style tactics 
flashbangs, tear gas, rubber bullets, helicopters, armored vehicles. We're out here peacefully pro protesting, but they're armed like they're going to war. Yeah, they are. Heavily armed, a very common collocation, means that these people are carrying many, many dangerous weapons. Okay, flashbang is like a grenade that doesn't explode, but instead of exploding, it emits a really, really bright light and a deafening noise, so it stuns the person that they are using it against. Tear gas uh, causes severe respiratory and eye problems. Now, funnily enough, this is banned in warfare, um, but there are some countries, including the United States, that still use it in the police force. Uh, rubber bullets are rubber-coated plastic, hard plastic bullets. They're bigger than normal bullets. And despite them being supposedly being uh, benign, they're not really. They cause extensive damage and they have done recently. Um, so if you look up rubber bullets and crowd control, um, you will see many, many injuries, including death. So they're not quite as um, innocent as the police make them out to be. And look, for any viewers sitting at home, shocked by the scenes of police brutality, I get it, I'm white too. But it's worth remembering, that's the tip of a very large iceberg. It didn't start this week or with this president, and it always disproportionately falls on black community. John Oliver mentions that this is the tip of the iceberg, it means that this is only a small part of what we can see in the whole system of p police brutality and what's going on with systemic racism. It's because here are some hard facts. Very often used in newsrooms, hard facts are facts which are proved to be true and cannot be proven otherwise. In Minneapolis, where George Floyd was murdered, police use force against black people at seven times the rate of whites. Black Americans are two and a half times more likely than whites to be killed by police. And about one in every thousand black men can expect to be killed by police. The next three explanations are going to be about how we give statistics. Police use force against black people at seven times the rate of white people. So we need a verb plus X times the rate of Y. Another way to give a statistic, uh, you have a noun, black Americans are um, X times as likely as, or X times um, more likely then, um, both of those are very similar. You can use them in the same way. And the last one here is X in every Y and then a verb. So X and Y are always numbers. One in every 10, uh, seven in every 100 are likely to be or are going to be. So this is probably the easiest one out of all of the statistics. Um, to describe. Let's start by just acknowledging that the police have long enjoyed an exalted role in American society. So if the police have an exalted role, they have a high or very powerful role in the community. But if we want to talk about how we got here, it's important to remember that we got here on purpose. To do something on purpose is to do it intentionally. Now, for a century after that, police in the South were responsible for enforcing segregation while allowing and sometimes participating in lynchings and anti-black terrorism. Segregation, or to segregate, is to separate something or someone apart from something or someone else. Lynchings were very common in the history of black America where a group or a mob of people would kill someone, in this case a black person, um, without a trial, without going to court um, for something that they had supposedly or allegedly done. And as black people migrated to the north by the millions, they were met there yet again by brutality. And all of this, coupled with the continued denial of economic and housing opportunities, not always particularly subtle, by the way. To be subtle 
is something that's not noticeable or obvious. So if something is not very subtle, then it's very obvious. Couple means two. Coupled with means added to or joined to. Meant that by the summer of 1967, there were a series of high profile uprisings against racial injustice across the United States. A high profile uprising is something that's very, very public and gets a lot of attention. Uprising is when the people rise up against people in power. So this was all very public and had a lot of attention. Or, as white people actually describe that exact time. The summer of 1967. It is known as the summer of love. Yeah, it is known as that. And that's a pretty big disconnect, isn't it? Here he says a pretty big disconnect. Pretty big here means very big. Um, and sometimes, depending on the tone of voice, pretty can mean moderate or average, like, how's your day? Pretty good. It means, okay, average. But in this sentence, John Oliver means pretty big, means very big. And what he means by a disconnect here is that if you compare the summer of love, where everyone was happy, and you compare what was really going on and the racial injustice, then there was a big gap between these two things, a gap or a disconnect. And by the time we got to the 90s, a school of thought called broken windows or zero tolerance policing had started to take root. A school of thought is a particular way of thinking. And what John Oliver is referring to here is a concept of this broken windows or zero tolerance um, that was happening in the 90s. So this is how people were thinking in the 90s. He uses this analogy a lot. To take root is to really become established. Um, so this, the root of a tree, thinking, if you think of it going into the ground and taking hold, um, so it's becoming established. Which held that if minor crimes are left unattended, it will lead to more serious crimes. Therefore, police had better crack down on those minor offences. Had better is really just a synonym for should here. So when we say they had better crack down on these minor crimes, what they're really saying is we had, uh, we really should uh, crack down, which is to become more strict in dealing with a problem. So in dealing with these minor crimes, so they should really become more strict on these crimes. That fueled the saturation of police in low income communities of color and gave way to policies like stop and frisk, which essentially allow police officers to search people at random. At that policy's peak in 2011, of the nearly 700,000 stops recorded in New York, the vast majority were of black and Latino people. If something is random, it means it has no process or pattern to it. Vast majority, this is a very common collocation, they go together really well. Vast majority means 90% are over. And all the while, as we were continuing to boost funding for police and give them more authority, we were simultaneously slashing spending on key social services. That meant that in many communities, the police were the only ones left to handle almost any issue that people had, which is a real problem, as this former Dallas police chief readily admits. All the while, we don't use this very often, but it sounds nice to my ears. All the while is during this entire time, to slash, in this case, slashing means to reduce drastically, uh, reduce sharply, or to cut something. To readily admit something is to admit something without hesitation. It's another very common collocation. We use this readily admit, or another very common one is something to be readily available, which is available without any delay or problem. We're asking cops to do too much in this country. We are. We're just asking us to do too much. Every societal failure, we put it off on the cops to solve. Not enough mental health funding. Let the cop handle it. Not enough drug addiction funding. Let's give it to the cops. Here in Dallas, we got a loose dog problem. 
Let's have a cough, chase loose dogs. And you know what? He is absolutely right. We are asking police to do far too much. The second point that we want to look at tonight, what the major obstacles to reform have been, because one of the biggest issues is police unions. Police union, now there are many unions in many different organizations, and it's basically a group of people who, because of the strength of its members, they use that as a bargaining tool to improve conditions in their organization. And in this case, it's a police union. Even in cities where the mayor and police chief say all the right things, it's important to know that the union can stop whatever they are proposing dead in its tracks. To stop something dead in its tracks is to stop something very suddenly or sharply. And unions can make it incredibly difficult to discipline officers even for egregious misconduct. Egregious meaning shocking or horrific and misconduct is very bad behaviour. Now, one good way to attempt to get reforms past a union's resistance is if the federal government steps in, which it actually can. It has the power to investigate police departments for a pattern of civil rights violations and enter what is called a consent decree, in which the police department agrees to make institutional changes that are then overseen by a federal court. When somebody steps in, they get involved in order to help a situation. Civil rights basically means the rights of individuals to have equal treatment. Not better treatment, just equal treatment. To oversee something is to supervise. You can use it in business, governments, a uh, mom overseeing her, her, her son or daughter's homework can be used in all situations. The problem is how or even whether the government does that depends on who is running it. And right now it's this wildly unsuccessful Bible salesman. So if the unions won't act and the federal government won't act, what else can you do as a civilian to get accountability if the police violated your rights? Well, you could try and sue the city or the individual officer in question. To sue someone or something or an organization is to start legal proceedings against them in order to gain um, money or in order to gain recognition that they were doing wrong and, and what you believe is correct. Black communities have had to be perpetual activists while also routinely being disenfranchised. If you're a perpetual activist, you are a permanent activist. You are doing it all the time. Perpetual means forever routinely disenfranchised. Another very common collocation that you will hear in the news means to be frequently deprived of your rights. And it is long past time that the rest of us join to make sure that their voices are heard and acted upon. Because it's going to be far too easy for nothing to meaningfully change here. That is what has always happened before. It's long past time that something should happen. So basically it's saying that it should have happened already. It's overdue. We're in the same shit now that we were in back then. And if you're not directly impacted by it, it is tempting to look for a reason to feel better about the world, to look at some cops kneeling and think, oh, well, we just need more of that. But we need so much more than that. Because ours is a firmly entrenched system in which the roots of white supremacy run deep. He uses this um, imagery of a trench, which is a long, thin hole in the ground they used in wars where the soldiers would hide in the trenches uh, and they would conduct wars from the trenches. Now, if it's an entrenched system, it means it's firmly in place. It's been there a long time. So firmly means it's long established. It's been there a long time. When he says the roots of white supremacy run deep, again, he's using this roots imagery of a tree. Um, if the roots run deep into the ground, it means it's been there a long time. So what he's saying is that white supremacy has been around a long, long time. And it is critical that we all grab a fucking shovel. 
to do anything less would be absolutely unforgivable. Oops, sorry, forgot to record this one. Um, to grab a shovel, um, basically, previously he was talking about being in a trench, being in a hole. We need to grab a shovel to be able to dig ourselves out of this massive hole we've got ourselves into. There is, there is one person I saw this week whose words have been echoing around my head. If someone's words are echoing around your head, it means that you've been thinking about them a lot and agreeing with them also. So now I'm, I'm going to let her have the last word tonight. So when they say, why do you burn down the community? Why do you burn down your own neighborhood? It's not ours. We don't own anything. We don't own anything. There is, Trevor Noah said it so beautifully last night. There's a social contract that we all have, that if you steal or if I steal, then the person who is the authority comes in and they fix the situation. But the person who fixes the situation is killing us. So the social contract is broken. And if the social contract is broken, why the fuck do I give a shit about burning the fucking football hall of fame, about burning a fucking target? You broke the contract when you killed us in the streets and didn't give a fuck. You broke the contract when for 400 years we played your game and built your wealth. You broke the contract when we built our wealth again on our own by our bootstraps in Tulsa and you dropped bombs on us. When we built it in Rosewood and you came in and you slaughtered us. You broke the contract, so fuck your target. Fuck your Hall of Fame. As far as I'm concerned, they could burn this bitch to the ground. And it still wouldn't be enough. And they are lucky that what black people are looking for is equality and not revenge. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to watch the whole John Oliver video, the link is in the description below. So I really hoped that helped to widen your vocabulary and your knowledge on this very sensitive but very important topic. And again, if you like this video, don't hesitate to click like and subscribe for more videos. Actually, next week we have a really tricky grammar item coming up, so I will see you then. Bye-bye and have a great week.